Hello and welcome. My name is Michelle Briganti uh, from Explore with Michelle. And I am here today to celebrate with you um, yoga, uh, International Yoga Day. So when I think about yoga or when I offer this to my clients and my students, we think um, the, the translation of yoga quite literally, the word in Sanskrit is union or to unite. And when we think about uniting, we look at it from the physical, spiritual, and emotional bodies, right? The layers of the being. And that un the union goes along with not only our physical and spiritual and emotional self, but that with great nature. And so the earth around us with divine spirit, with all that is. So there are so many different ways to approach yoga. I have students say to me, and people who love to bird or spend time um, cooking or things like that, there are so many practices in our life that we do that are part of our yoga, things that bring us to that silent space, that quiet space, the place that we drop out of the mind and drop into the actual being. So with the um, with yoga there are so many different things whether it be from a strength standpoint or we're talking about the physical practice of it or even with the breath practice of it there are so many benefits things like um, strength things like uh, better sleep things such as managing stress or managing pain within our body and so the person that we most often refer to when it comes to yoga, his name is Patanjali. And Patanjali was the author of the Yoga Sutras. And he speaks to the Yoga Sutras or he speaks to yoga through eight limbs. And the first two limbs of yoga are the yamas and the niyamas. And those are essentially the ethical or the moral guidelines that they suggest to follow to live a spiritually full um, life. And so for a for example, a uh, thing like ahimsa and ahimsa is probably one of the most familiar of the yamas is um, nonviolence. So not only nonviolence to other beings, animals, things like that, whether any, any sentient being, but also uh, nonviolence to ourselves and the way that we speak and the way that we communicate with each other, uh, with, with ourselves and with our own spirit. And uh, for example, also satya and satya is truth. So always speaking from the truth, always sitting in that seat of truth. So those are just a, some examples of what the yamas and the yamas are. So then after that is the third of the eight, yo, um, the eight limbs is asana. And asana is the one that most people have heard of. And what asana literally translates to in Sanskrit is um, a seat. So a seat of meditation, a comfortable seat. But we know in our Western culture, asana more familiar as, as the movement, as the physical practice of the yoga. So your warrior one, warrior two, the postures, things like that. So after that, what you move from, you have this foundation of your guidelines, right? So your structure. And then you have your asana, so you find your seat. After that is the fourth of the eight limbs, and that's pranayam. And pranayam is breath work. And breath work, actually, in Latin, the word breath translates to um, spirit, spiritu. So this is the way that we connect with the body outside of us now. So this is this idea of connecting with spirit. Our breath is what we ride into this world. Our breath is the last thing that we have before we leave. So that is the fourth limb. And that's one of the uh, limbs that I'll be practicing with you today so that we'll connect with, again, the physical, spiritual, and emotional body through our breath. After that, just to close the circle on it is pratyahara which is withdrawal of the senses. So almost like you can imagine focus and then moving to um, dharana, which is concentration. Then after that is actually dhyana, which is meditation. And then after, and the, the eighth limb, the highest is samadhi, which is bliss. So these are the steps that we take in order to achieve the most ultimate, um, the most ultimate of all of 
life is bliss. So that's what gets us there. So one of the things I wanted to share with you today in honor of um, International Yoga Day is breath work. And so one of the ways that we explore one of the practices of breath is called dirga. And dirga will, some people would call it a three-part breath, but it's more um, the complete breath, a complete breath. So we're going to practice that together. And this is something that you can take with you. Breathwork is the most amazing tool I find that it allows us to drop in wherever it is that we are. So one of the examples that I can give through my own personal experience is that I was in a corporate career for about over 20 years that I was always in a high state of anxiety, always stressed out. Um, and it, what I realized when I sat into my yoga teacher training after I really started to listen was this was a choice that I was making. So I was essentially plugged into the wrong outlet and I was not able to get my breath below my collarbones. And when we break this breath into three parts, we break it, we allow ourselves to find the, um, the full complete breath. We know that there is also this beautiful rib cage. And then we have the diaphragm, the diaphragm that dances with the lungs when we breathe. And so to understand that a little bit better, just to explain that a little bit better is, so when we inhale, inhale using the nose, to cleanse the breath, right? to cleanse whatever it is that's coming through into the system, to heat up the oxygen so that it's more readily available for us to use, and also to help us fight all any, off any um, toxins or any sort of viruses or things. We have um, a chemical in our body that actually is called nitric oxide that helps us to fight disease, so, or disease, right? So, that's why we use the nose and it comes in through the nasal passages and it comes down to the back of the throat, into the upper chest, into the rib cage and down into the diaphragm. What happens is that as you bring breath in, as you bring oxygen in, the lungs expand with the pressure of the abdominals and the diaphragm actually helps to draw down. So that's our, it's our largest muscle, muscle of respiration next to the heart. So it actually pulls down and out of the way, presses the organs out of the way. And that's why the belly expands so that the lungs themselves can fill with oxygen. And then as you exhale, the lungs compress, the diaphragm rises back up, the organs go back into place. So just so you know, from an anatomical standpoint, what's happening. And the beauty of it as well is that when you, you imagine that, so there we, when you're talking about the nervous system, we have the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. And the sympathetic nervous system is that fight or flight or freeze. The parasympathetic nervous system is what controls our um, rest and digest. Okay. So if we didn't have the parasympathetic nervous system, our heart rate would be, I think, 120 beats per minute. So it would always be as if your foot was on the gas. So we call in the parasympathetic nervous system and what that does is it taps the brake and that's the exhale. So that's why these parts of the in and the breath of complete breath is so vital to our, our being. And it tells our nervous system that it's okay to calm down, that we are safe, that there's not a bear chasing us, right? So that's a part of that old reptilian brain and part of that old um, part, of the, um, part of the nervous system. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna practice some dirga together. And so just to make you really comfortable, I'm gonna ask you to find a seat. Now that can be in a chair, if you're comfortable on a meditation cushion, um, if you wanna prop yourself up against a wall or um, again, finding some place that finds you really comfortable. We will find that seat. And if you're sitting in a chair, just making sure the bottoms of the feet are connected to the ground, like you feel yourself solidly connected to the earth. And same thing, if you're in a butterfly or if perhaps you're in hero, which is the heels tucked underneath the seat. And then we'll begin to gently close the eyes. And it's a total myth that the eyes need to be closed in order for you to meditate, in order for you to breathe. Yet we close the eyes so that the heart can open inviting ourselves into this space of peace, connecting 
our physical, spiritual, emotional well-being with great nature, with divine source. And as you settle into that place, just notice the rate and the rhythm of the breath. Notice the texture and the size of it. Dropping any story that you want to create. Knowing that the breath, just like everything in life, will continue to shift. And just know that I'm here to hold the container, that I'm here to hold you in this space, whether I'm quiet or I'm speaking, I'm right here. Reminding you that you belong, reminding you that you are seen and heard and supported. Reminding you that exactly where you need to be And then just taking an inhale through the nose and maybe you open up the mouth and you exhale and just let it all go. You sigh it out. <sighs> you can do that a few more times. And then swallow. And find your stillness. And then inviting you to take the hands to your belly, so just below the belly button to where the bottom of the container, the furnace, we like to call it, is. And spread the hands nice and wide. And notice how it is to hold yourself in this space without getting caught up in anything, any negativity that wants to pop up. How often is it that you get to hold yourself? that you get to remind yourself that you have your own back. And then as you inhale through the nose, breathing into your own hands, know this, that the belly gently expands into the hands. And maybe it's quite subtle at first. And just reminding yourself you're safe and you're secure, that you are so protected and provided for at all times. Breathing in through the nose, bringing it down into the furnace, down into the belly as the belly lifts into the back of, the own of your own hands. Notice as the face softens and the jaw softens. And maybe the lifting is ever so subtle and just allowing your intention and attention to be enough. And taking a moment and then sliding the hands up into the rib cage. So spread the fingertips wide on top of the rib cage. And directing the breath here as you inhale through the nose, bring that rib cage, let it rise into the back of your own hands. Allow yourself to be held. Notice the gentle lifting and lowering of the body. Reminding yourself of how powerful you are, how strong you are. All the will and the courage that it takes us to live this life. And 
continuing to breathe through the nose and allowing the ribcage to expand into the back of your own hands, allowing your hands to hold you. Notice where it is that you can soften. Maybe it's through the throat and the top of the shoulders. Just for a few more moments. And then take the hands and bring them just underneath the collarbone, spread the fingertips wide, let them lay over the heart center. Make the connection of your heart and your throat chakras, those energetic centers. Your heart full of love and your voice, your throat, the way that you express yourself, the way you communicate that love. And breathe and notice here how you hold yourself. Allow the upper chest to rise into your own hands. Notice how you can change your reality with just a shift of your own intention, with your own attention. And when you're ready, you can bring the hands back to your lap. And what I'm going to encourage you here to do is you can keep the hands down if you want a sensation of grounding, of earthing. And if you are in need of receiving, you'll flip the palms up. Maybe you even make some two gentle cups towards the sky. And if you're not sure what it is exactly that you need, try it. You can always change your mind. You always have the ability to choose. And so we're going to connect these parts of the breath to make one complete breath. So inhaling into the nose, notice as you breathe into the belly, then into the rib cage, then into the collarbones, into the upper chest, and then exhale from the upper chest, from the rib cage, and from the belly. And whether you exhale out the nose or back out the mouth is entirely up to you. So as you inhale through the nose, sipping that breath into the belly, into the rib cage, in to the collarbones, exhaling from the collarbones, from the rib cage, and from the belly. And allowing you here to sit in silence for a few moments and just notice your breath, be with your breath, be with your spirit. Continuing to move that breath gently, gently into the furnace, into the bottom of the container, into the middle, and into the upper chest. And then exhaling from the collarbones, from the heart center, exhaling from your solar plexus, and then exhaling from your root. And 
allowing yourself to be cleansed and nourished with this breath. With each and every inhale, inviting something in that it is that you need, nourishing yourself with that breath, with every exhale, making space, letting something go, surrendering. And perhaps you might even notice that lingering between, that pause, that opportunity to be in that very moment, in that suspended moment of life. Let's take a few more rounds. There's a space within the body that feels challenging to access. Send it love, place your hands there. There's a reason why they call yoga a practice. There's the ability, the opportunity for us to show up and try again. The ability to show up and support ourselves, to hold space for ourselves so that we may show up in the world the way that it is that we choose. Knowing that by filling our container first, that we then have a vessel to which we can serve from. At the bottom of the next exhale, just let it all go, just back to your natural breath and notice if anything at all has changed within the texture, within the size, within the energy that surrounds it. And then bringing your hands together in front of your heart center and giving some friction between the hands, like as if you were warming them up in front of the fire, the fire of the heart that radiates all of the love and the magic that is you. And stack them one on top of the other on the heart center. Thank yourself. Thank yourself for always showing up. Thank yourself for being present in this space that is always here for you. Knowing that you have the ability to create that space for yourself, just as you do for others. Bringing the palms and the fingertips to touch at heart center and bowing your head to your heart. In deep gratitude for all of the magic, all of the divine energy that is you as you. And as always, with exactly that that I share in this practice, with honor and gratitude, thank you, thank you, thank you for sharing it with me. I'm sending so much love and light from my heart to yours. Namaste. This concludes our practice. Thank you so much for being here. I'm wishing you the most beautiful day. And I'm sending so much love from my heart to yours. And please feel free to reach out. You can uh, DM me on Instagram. It's Explore with Michelle. You can find me on Facebook under Michelle Ann, Explore with Michelle. The website is the same. Um, and I just am wishing you the most beautiful day. And know that you are loved. So just keep going. <laughs> All the blessings. <laughs>